everyone, I'm Michelle Smith and welcome to my channel. I have a Dollar Tree DIY for you today. In today's crafting adventure, I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful beach themed wreath. Most of the items that I used to complete this wreath came from Dollar Tree from their new Shore Living line. I'm absolutely in love with this new line and I'm having so much fun creating fun projects using the products. Let me show you how to make it. To get started today, you're going to need one of these packages of the nautical icons of the little anchors. Uh, you can pick this up at Dollar Tree in their new Shore Living line. And you get six pieces in a pack and they are 2.9 inches by 3.7 inches. I'm going to paint these a nice pretty bright red and the one that I'm using is by Folk Art and it is called Lipstick Red, but you can use any bright blue based red that you have. Now I'm only going to use about three or four of the anchors. I'm going to go and paint four. I'm thinking that's probably what I'm going to use. You can set the other two aside and use them on another project. And then you just want to get a good coat of the red paint on your anchor. Just make sure to get those little edges so you have a nice clean image. Depending on what paint you use, you may need two coats. Go ahead and get all four of your little anchors painted. You want to set those aside and let them fully dry. Once they're fully dry, we'll come back and add a little bit more detail to them. While our anchors are drying, we can move ahead and get to work on our base here. You're going to need a package of pipe cleaners cut in half. And then I'm going to be using this uh, decorative mesh that I found at Dollar Tree. This came out in their Shore Living. I think it's very, very pretty. And this is still six inches at five yards, so it's the same as their regular standard mesh. But I really like all the different colors. And we're going to be doing two rolls at a time doing the poof method today. I think that'll show off this mesh the best. You're also going to need something to uh, measure with, either a ruler or a cutting mat. Now when I work with more than one roll of deco mesh at a time, I always like to put one out on either side of my body. That way they do not tangle as I work with them. You want to take the ends of both of the rolls. You want to scrunch them together. You don't want to layer them because when you go back to open up your poofs, it'll make it more difficult for you to do that. So you want to scrunch them and have them side by side. And then take a pipe cleaner and you want to securely attach that to the end. I always pull it to the back, get it nice and tight, pinch at the base and give it a couple twists. Now we're going to be attaching our poofs to the two bars here in the center and we're going to start here on one of the crossbars. So from the top you just put it over the crossbar there and pull it to the back. Give it a good twist or two. And then you want to take those ends of the mesh push them to the back. And then I like to pull them back through 
my pipe cleaners and give it one more twist. That'll just make them a little bit more secure and make sure that those raggedy ends stay to the back. And then I just push my pipe cleaner forward. Now you can trim some of this, the ends here off, but you want to leave about an inch so it does not pull back through. Sometimes a uh, Dollar Tree mesh does spray from the sides, so if you see anything like that, just snip off anything that's loose. Okay, we have our mesh now nicely secure. So you want to grab both of your uh, rolls of mesh and you want to measure, you want to start to measure where you have it attached here on the wreath form. And you're going to measure at eight inches. We're going to do eight inch poops. So pinch at eight inches. Grab your pipe cleaner and wrap it around. Give it a couple twists and then go ahead and attach it onto the two bars there in the center. Pull it to the back and give a good twist or two. And then I always pull my pipe cleaners together and then push them forward and then push your little hoof over. Measure again at eight inches pinch, add your pipe cleaner, again attach it to the two bars in the middle. And then you push it over. Now what I like to do is I like to do a section first and a section is between the two crossbars and then I'll go back and open up my poofs. Now the reason why I'm doing smaller poofs, I'm doing eight inches, is because uh, one this is rather sheer and it has lots of color so I want it to be a little bit more dense. So as you're adding these, what you'll want to do is you'll want to want add one to your crossbar and then nine in the middle. And then on the next one, you'll add one to the crossbar and then one in the middle. And you'll do that all the way around. And it will take you a total of six rolls of deco mesh. You'll work with two rolls at a time. And those first two rolls should cover your first two sections. Okay, so just keep measuring out your poofs and keep adding them and work your way around. I'll go ahead and do my first two sections here with my first two rolls. I'll open everything up and then come back and show you what it's looking like. I have two rolls of my deco mesh attached and I've gone in and opened them up. Now I didn't completely fluff them because I kind of like uh, the look of it a little bit twisted, but I did pull the two apart because remember we did two rolls together. So I just kind of went through and like this one, see I didn't open it up all the way because I kind of like it folded over and it looks nice and full. And here on the back, you can see by pushing your pipe cleaner ends forward, it gives your back a nice clean look. And I was able to add one more poof to each section. So I put one on the crossbar and then 10 in the center, one on the crossbar and 10 in the center, and then one more on the crossbar. Okay, so if that happens to you, just go back and move one from this side over to the other side so that they're pretty even. If you just have one extra poof, that's okay, no biggie. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes Dollar Tree mesh is a little short. Sometimes it's a little long. So when you get to the end, just work with whatever you have. I'm going to finish my base and then we'll come back and we will decorate. I have my base all done and I have fluffed out my wreath. I am very happy. 
and it took exactly the six rolls of deco mesh to complete my wreath. Here on the back, you can see um, by tucking your pipe cleaners, everything looks nice and clean. You can go ahead and set this aside. So my little anchors are dry. So I'm going to add a little bit more detail. You'll need one of these Crafter's Square metallic markers in white. I have seen them in pretty much all of my stores recently. They have restocked these. These are my favorite out of all of the type of paint pens, chalk markers that they sell. And the reason is because it has a nice fine tip. So the first thing I want to do here on my anchor is I'm just going to add a little bit of stitching all the way around the edge with my little white metallic marker here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want it to look a little bit more custom rather than just putting paint. So just follow the shape of the anchor and make small little marks. That looks so much better, adds just so much more character to it. Now, uh, right here on my piece of paper, I've laid out just a small amount of the Waverly Antique Wax. I want to add a little bit of age to these. Now, I have a stiff brush. This will help me because uh, I don't want a lot of paint. I just want a small amount. So just dip it in and then tap off anything extra. And then I just kind of tap my way all the way around the edge first. So that I get a little bit of it in the areas I want. Now I'm not doing it solid. I'm just getting a little bit of that color on so that it shows a little bit of age. Okay, and then once you've gone all the way around, I just take my brush, I don't add any more of the Waverly Antique Wax, and I just kind of quickly brush through with whatever's left on my brush, just to move it around and give it that aged look. There you go. So you want to do this to all four of your anchors. We're going to be using this sign today. I fell in love the minute I saw it. This is part of the new collection of Shore Living at Dollar Tree. Now they have two different colors to choose from. They have this one that has the uh, dark navy blue sail. They also have one that has a white sail and a different saying. So either of these will work. I really liked the one with the dark blue sail. I think it'll look the best on the background that I've chosen. Now to prep the sign, you wanna remove the jute cord that was here at the top and then you wanna run some floral wire through that. And I just put it through the hole and then over the top and twist it to the back so I can attach it. Here at the bottom, I've attached a pipe cleaner on either side and I've just hot glued that down. Now the reason why I like to use a combination of floral wire and pipe cleaners is if this goes outside or it goes somewhere where uh, it's going to be hot and, or moist and cold, the hot glue can fail. If that tends to happen, my sign's not going to fall off because I also have it secured here with floral wire. So get your sign prepped and then we'll start assembling. So we're going to attach our sign now. I always like my signs to sit right up on top and I do usually prefer them right in the middle and that is where I'm going to place this one. I think that looks really good. 
Now to place this, all you do is you take your pipe cleaners and your floral wire. You separate the mesh until you get down to the wire frame in the back, and then you attach it to the wire frame in the back. Now when you initially attach it, you don't want to attach it too tight until you know you've got it right in the position that you want and then you can tighten it down. And you want to be careful because if you tighten one part too much, like the top, it'll sink down like this. Or if you do one side, it won't lay flat. So just be aware that you want it to sit right on top and not pull down into the mesh. I got my sign on. I'm really happy with that. It's nice and secure and sitting exactly where I want it. Now there's one more thing I want to do here to my little anchors and that's add a little piece of jute cord. So right here on the back at the top I'm going to add a small dollop of hot glue and then from the front I'm going to feed in a piece of jute cord and have it attached right there where I put the hot glue. That way it comes out through the front. And I'm gonna wrap that around just a couple times. Like that. And then pull it across into the back. And then just add another little dollop of hot glue and lay the other end in. That makes it perfect. We're going to work on a bow now. You're going to need one full length pipe cleaner. Now this ribbon I picked up from Dollar Tree. This is one of the new ribbons that they're carrying. It is Yama Mega Roll. This is one and a half inches by 18 feet, and it is 100% polyester. I like that really nice dark blue. And then from Walmart, I picked this up. This is the Offre brand. And let's see, I believe this one is seven eighths of an inch at nine feet. I picked this one up at Walmart and it was $3.97. And then this one is also the Offre brand. I picked this one up at Walmart as well. It is one and a half inches at nine feet and it was $3.97. We're gonna start with our uh, largest ribbon here, which is this pretty dark blue. I'm going to measure my tails at eight inches. Pinch and then place it right in between the two dowel rods. Now I really like to use the Easy Bow Maker. This is my favorite bow maker. It makes it very easy for me to work with the ribbon and um, because I have arthritis in my hands, so sometimes it's hard for me to hold everything. So this makes it nice because it holds it for me. Now this ribbon has uh, one side is a little bit nicer than the other. So once you come through, you want to go ahead and twist that. You want the nice side of your ribbon facing down. Okay, and I'm going to measure this loop at five inches. And I'm going to do three loops on either side at five inches. So remember, once you come through, go ahead and twist so that nice side is facing down. And then measure at five inches. For your convenience, in the description box below is a complete list of all the tools and materials I used to complete this beach themed wreath.
Once I have my three loops on each side, I can measure out my other tail at eight inches. Now you can adjust your bow while you're working with it here in the bow maker. help you get an idea, make sure everything is looking the way it's supposed to. So I'm happy with my blue ribbon. I'm going to go to my pretty check ribbon now. And again, I'm gonna measure my tails at eight inches. But this time on my loops, I'm only going to make my loops at four inches and I'm going to do two on either side. If you enjoy hauls, crafts, and learning new craft techniques, please consider subscribing to my channel. I do upload new content every week. And if you hit the notification bell when it pops up, YouTube will let you know every time I upload new content. Once you have your loops done, go ahead and measure out your other tail at 8 inches. And now we're going to move to this really pretty ribbon. I think this really ties the bow together. Again, I'm going to measure my tail at 8 inches. Now because this ribbon is only nice on one side, once you come through, you're going to need to twist it so that the nice side is facing down. And then on this one, I'm going to measure my loops at three inches, and I'm gonna do two on either side. If this is the first time that you've come to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy that you were able to find me. If you are one of my subscribers and returning to my channel, Thank you for all your love and support. It really means the world to me. And then once you have those two loops, cut your other tail. So go ahead and check your loops. Do any adjusting that you may need to do now. Then you want to take your full length pipe cleaner. I always slide it down underneath on one side. And bring that up in the middle. Lift up, that way it helps you hold your bow. And then on a thick bow like this, I like to wrap my pipe cleaner around that center and pull it to the back. Just makes it easier for you to get it nice and snug. Full tight and give a couple twists. That looks cute. Okay, now I want to hide my pipe cleaner here, so I'm going to cut a little piece of my ribbon to go over the center. Just a couple inches is fine. Now on the back here, before you glue it on, you want to open your pipe cleaners, one to either side. Okay, then you need to decide how thick you want it. I don't want it quite as thick as the ribbon, so I'm going to fold it in on either side. 
just a little bit. And then that I'm going to place right around the center. And I'm going to do it where one of those anchors sits right there in the center of the bow. I think that'll look really cute. Pull it around and hot glue it in the back. And that is what your bow should look like. I covered the center there with the red ribbon. I think that looks really cute. Now I usually cut my tails once I get this on my uh, wreath. That way I can tell how long or short I want my ribbons. Now here on the back, the pipe cleaners are not going to be long enough for me to be able to attach it to my wreath. So I'm going to take another pipe cleaner and lay it right here in the center and take these short pipe cleaners and wrap them around. And then I'm going to take one and wrap it around one of the long ones. Like that. And then I'm going to take the other short one and wrap it around the other one. Now another trick that I like to use to make sure that my uh, bow does not sink down into my wreath is I'll grab both of those and I'll twist them together up for about three inches. Okay, so these are all twisted together. That will be the depth inside the wreath so that my bow is guaranteed to stay sitting up on top of the wreath and not sink down inside. Then you just need to decide where you want to put your bow. I think I'm gonna put it on this side so that you can read the wording. And again, you just take your pipe cleaners, you separate your mesh and you attach it to the wreath frame in the back. And then just do your adjusting and trim your tails however you would like. I have my bow on and I'm very happy with that. So now we're going to place our final elements, which are our little anchors here. Now these are light enough that you can hot glue them on. I am going to be doing a combination of the Aileen's Packy Original Glue and hot glue to attach these. Uh, Aileen's Original Packy Glue is supposed to be weather resistant, so once it dries and it fully sets up, you shouldn't have any issues if it gets too hot or too cold of anything falling off. Just decide where you'd like to place them. Just kind of push them down onto the mesh and hold them for a minute until the hot glue sets. The hot glue will hold it in place until the Aileen's tacky glue fully sets up. Okay, I'm going to place the rest of my uh, anchors here and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And there you go, we are all done. I am really happy with how this turned out. I think our little red anchors were the perfect final embellishment for this wreath. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and show me some love in the comments. If you could share my content with your friends, I'd appreciate that as well. Thanks so much for stopping by. You know, it's always a pleasure to see you. I hope everyone is staying happy, healthy, and strong. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.